This episode was sponsored by Critical Dice and the Endless Bag of Dice. Welcome to the Compendium, a resource designed to help you spend less time learning D&D and more time actually playing. Yeah, the, the clearest, I think, the obvious choice for pairing, class pairings, when you're talking about yes, orcs or half-orcs. Or wine and cheese pairings. Yes, is barbarian. Yes. But I feel like that is too easy. It so is easy. So I want, I'd be interested to look at some of the other classes that would be yes. a really interesting um, companion to that race that's not just the brute force, like continuation of that concept of brute right. force. Yeah, Because that's, that's going to work well for you. Like if you want to be a absolutely. tank, be an orc barbarian or a half orc barbarian yeah. and you're going to do and that's a the, lot of damage. That's the thing. Like if you go with the grain for your, your class race pairing, anything that's martially oriented is going to be great. In fact, if I remember correctly, on the page for Paladin in the Player's Handbook, the example they show artistically is a half work. Oh, okay. If I remember this correctly. And so Fighter would Paladin be great. Paladin makes a lot of sense. Paladin would be awesome, especially if they're driven by, as we said before, Grumish, or a different deity as a way to kind of temper those urges. But yeah, anytime that you're going to be a frontline fighter, a kind of a tank, using melee weapons, uh, especially if they do a lot of damage, that's perfectly great to go that way. Um, to go against the grain, kind of uh, you know, off-label usage of, of the class race pairings, um, I think it would be really interesting <laughs> to do like a, like a rogue. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a class Stealthy. inherently yeah. suited to subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> with a race inherently not suited to subtlety. Um, but, See, I was thinking wizard because you usually think of squishy little wizard, right? And so you're pairing squishy little wizard with like big built right. race. And there's a stigma with half orcs that they're dumb, but there's nothing in the lore, nothing in the stats that they have to be dumb. Not at all. Right. Not at all. Um, and, uh, and wizards are typically seen, like said, yeah, really squishy, uh, skinny kids <clears throat> like myself. Uh, but uh, they don't have to be. You know that wizard can be swole. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think also um, we've seen this in Critical Role uh, where uh, Ford is a uh, warlock, which makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard that a lot, that half yeah. orcs and orcs are like really great companions with warlocks. Right, because there's packed with the blade, mm-hmm. uh, which gives them a lot of that martial stuff back in there, too. So it ends up being a kind of a backdoor way into the, those martial classes again, which is kind of fun. And it's that, like the whole sell your soul for this blank, this one thing is like, why not? <laughs> it goes yeah, back to that, not? like, yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not going to live that long. Yeah, my soul. Right? My life is already short. Am I currently doing anything with the soul? I'm not really aware. I'm not? Great. You can have it. Sure. I'll take a look. If you get rid of drunk. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you can take my soul and go with you. Yeah. Yeah. Will Grumish go with you now? Because that would be great. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there a fine print that I can look at in this contract? Um, also, I unsurprisingly would say bard you you just think bards go with everything and they do go with everything that's because they do go with everything casey (laughs) thank you for making my point um but no because think about it like that passion that joie de vivre of just like wherever the road takes you and just like yeah i'm gonna be singing in here and i'm in a bar fight over there and later i'll be in the dungeon you could even go with like the circus performer act Mm -hmm. of like strongman yeah Right? For sure. Or, and, like, the people that come to, like, pay $5 to see the scariest creature around. Or, I don't know. Like, yeah. you could be the performer that's maybe the, like, Ferdinand likes to smell the flowers, but mm-hmm. you put on the show of being the big, scary, yeah. evil creature, mm-hmm. and people pay you money to just look at you, and you're like, okay, that that's easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're, like, doing an illusion for, like, the, the, the barker. It's like, you're not even really there. You run the whole show, but you're right? the one in the cage. Uh, that'd be really awesome. Yeah, and there's so many different colleges now for the bards that you could find one that would make a lot of sense going with that kind of uh, uh, you know passion on your sleeve kind of idea. So that's kind of where my mind goes. Also, I was thinking about this earlier today in the car, Artificer would be really a lot of fun. That's not one that we've really brought into pairings much until this it, point. It's Other not than no, because it's relatively new. It. Like, yeah. it, Artificer has come out since we've started the podcast. See, Artificer seems like, and again, there's nothing to imply this, and it, it's just 
stereotype me stereotyping this race i guess Mm -hmm. but they seem like they wouldn't be able to finesse like tools or other things like i think of artificer and i think of like oh you're building a pocket watch with these tiny little gears right other stuff that's not always true there's there's artificer armorers too who are making the cool gauntlets and shields and brass plates and all this other cool stuff like he couldn't the the half orc could never find armor that fit him right so he's like i'm just gonna make it (laughs) screw it i'll do it myself (laughs) you know take my anger out of this piece of Metal. Is he okay? Yeah, he's been forging for 36 hours straight. I don't know how he does it. I mean, it looks great, but wow. And I'd like they, to rage. Yeah, I would like to rage. Uh, on what? The armor. Okay. Um, you make it in half the You can have a bonus plus two there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's how I would do it. I think it would be a lot of fun. And then now, after talking about all this stuff with the half works, I'm actually kind of excited to play half work. Right, I think we just na- labeled time. almost every class. Yeah, like, but barring maybe good. two. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like you can do all of them basically. Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly versatile when it looks on the surface like right. it would be very much pigeonholing you into right. one because it area. adds new dimensions to the cl- to the classes that make them kind of like come alive and, and, and shimmer and shine in a different way. And so it's nice to see, to be able to pull out these aspects of the classes by putting a different race inside. Right, and this is going to be maybe a little bit of a, of an odd different way to end this, but. Something that just came up to me is that sometimes there are, are dialogues about DMs that are struggling with players at the table yeah. because they're using the excuse of that's just what my character would do. Mm-hmm. And I think that you would have to be cautious as a player that you're not necessarily going to play an orc just so that you can pick a fight with every other player that's there when they say something that you don't like. Because I think it would be easy to yes. unintentionally make everyone else have a bad time right? while still kind of being in character. Yeah. Right? I mean, does that make sense? It absolutely does because the excuse of that's just what my character would do is oftentimes a cop out for I want to be a jerk or yes. be selfish at the table this, in this collaborative game. This race is like built for it's right. letting you be a jerk if, if that's well, like. Well, it could be. You could absolutely focus on those elements of it. And so, like with everything, you're, everyone at the table has a job to work together with everyone else on the table in, in their particular roles. And so that you have to make sure that you're having fun, but also they're having fun too. And sometimes being the loose cannon that gets the party in trouble when it would be so easy if we just didn't get into a bar fight at this one town, please. They're like, hey, those orphans started it. I'm not going to back down. You know, I can see that, <laughs> but if you do it every single time, then it's, it's, it could get old really quick. So what are some tips that you might have for a DM that's potentially running into an issue like this with a player that's playing an orc? Especially because, like, with, with clerics, it's mm-hmm. easy to be like, oh, your, your god turns their back on you mm-hmm. because you're not following their domain. But with this one, like, Grummish is like, Grummish is very proud of you, actually, and so I'm not sure what to do here. <laughs> do you want to multiclass to Warlock? Because I think this is a really strong case now. Um, yeah, so what would you recommend? I mean, obviously, communication is key, yeah. but have you ever run into situations there, like yeah, this? So to... the, 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 there's two ways to do this. One one is outside the game, one is inside the game. Outside the game, just talk to them. Yeah. I know that a lot of people who play D&D do not like confrontation. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. Which is funny because I think people play D&D because they have a safe place to have confrontation. Yes. Right? Because they're not comfortable or it's they're not what to do in real life. It. They get to disassociate yeah. and put it on uh, exactly. their fictional character. But you just have to do it. And uh, it, it's very much that Benjamin Franklin quote, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Hit it early. Pull them aside. Hey, I know that you're having a blast. Other people are having fun, and I need you to just think about like, as you play your character, is this going to derail the story in a way that's just not going to make it fun for me as the DM, or is this going to come tedious to the people at the table as they're going to have to like give up on their own personal narratives and their own personal goals to right. keep getting you out of trouble or to get into the hijinks you want to do to the point where they just don't want to play with you anymore. And we don't want to see that happen. The rule, the way to take care of it inside the game is simple. Real world consequences. And cause I, I'm thinking in particular, uh, Critical Role, Campaign 1, Scanlan and Grog, they get into so much trouble everywhere they go. Like towns that are really critical for them to be able to visit at will where they're murdering shopkeeps and guards and hiding the bodies poorly and almost get them kicked out. It's like, oh man, this is going to go bad. And Matt just leans into it like, hey, this is what you guys chose. Uh, Because it's like, 
they're like, this is just what my character would do. And he's like, this is just what my town would do. You guys are about to get in a heap of trouble. And the rest of the party is like, we need this town. Stop it. You know, it, it was funny, but they also knew where to pump the brakes. So I think real, uh, real consequences for real actions is a great way to do that in the game. Right. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week on The Compendium, where we are talking about all things D&D, helping you spend less time learning and more time actually playing. This episode was sponsored by The Critical Dice and The Endless Bag of Dice, where you can get a new set of dice delivered to your door every single month for as little as $6.99. Click on the link in the show notes to learn more. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed listening in this week so that you know every time we push out a new video. And also leave a comment below if you learned something new in this episode that you didn't know before. Thank you so much for listening in. We'll see you guys next time.